Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today I'm going to be bringing you a video all about a way to naturally and effectively capture and kill fungus gnats and fruit flies. You can check this out here, I'm showing you the plant right now. This is a very effective and natural way of doing this without any pesticides or anything like that. I'm going to be introducing you to this plant and how anybody can grow one of these. If you follow my channel, you probably recognize this plant as I've been given updates on it. If you do not follow my channel, welcome and thank you so much for being here. My goal is to start a carnivorous plant nursery someday, so make sure to subscribe to my channel and you can check out some other really cool carnivorous plants like Venus flytraps or some Saracenia over there, but all kinds of different stuff. And go check out my channel and, and see if there's anything that you like. But there's a good chance that you arrived at my video today here because you are looking a way to, for a way to effectively and naturally capture and kill fungus gnats or fruit flies. And as you can see down there, these plants are doing a really good job of that. So let me introduce you really quickly here to the Pinguicula Sethos. This is a Mexican butterwort. These plants are really, really, really cool, and they're some of my favorite carnivorous plants. Uh, you can see this particular one here puts out a pink flower. Let me get back here, you can see it. We're gonna talk about this plant real quick, and we're gonna go over some care instructions for it so you can know uh, kind of what to expect with these plants and uh, how to care for them. They are a carnivorous plant, so they're a little bit different than some of the other plants, uh, but we're gonna kind of go over all that. But first, go ahead and let's check out and. Uh, see just how effective they are here you can see there's a whole bunch of fungus gnats down there you can see uh, let me pick this up here and turn it for you because you can see even the underside of these are even effective at capturing the fungus gnats which is really cool so these like I said are a carnivorous plant and what they do is they actually secrete a scent of rotting now with that being said I can't smell the rotting scent it's not something that the human can smell um, but it is a scent that the gnats and the fruit flies can smell and that's what attracts them to these plants and then basically what happens is, is these plants secrete a natural fluid and I'm gonna go ahead and, and change my angle you can't really see it right now but if I change the angle here look at this see all those dots that appear there that's a natural fluid that this secretes it's a sticky fluid and what happens is the gnats get stuck in that fluid you can see see if it there's a good shot right there you can kind of see let me see if I can get closer for you but you can see they get they they come over to to check out that that smell see what's going on and then they get stuck in it really cool and natural way of actually capturing and killing these gnats and basically what happens is this plant will eventually absorb all the nutrients from them and it sort of acts as a fertilizer for uh, these pings. Ping is kind of what we call them for short. It's a pinguicula, uh, but ping is what we call them for short, or you might see them also referred to as Mexican butterworts. So for substrate, these plants thrive in a, uh, a perlite and a sphagnum peat moss mix. And, it, and they actually these actually do a little bit better if you can add a little bit of sand to them. They like a little bit more of a sandy mix. They thrive in soils that um, are really devoid of any nutrients or minerals. It's really important for them. Uh, anything that has like any fertilizer in it or like a miracle grow anything that has any additives in it can actually kill it and are really bad for it so you want to make sure that your your soil or substrate is devoid of any nutrients or minerals especially anything like a fertilizer that's why you go with like a peat moss you also want to make sure and only water these with distilled water and what I do is I typically will fill up this tray of water let the, it absorb all that water let it sit for a few days and dry out a little bit and then refill that tray uh, so they're, they're pretty simple, but you do have to make sure you're using like a distilled or rainwater. Again, it's the same thing with the soil, the minerals and the nutrients in, in like tap water will actually kill these plants. So it's really important that your, your substrate and your water are both devoid of any nutrients or minerals or any type of additives like a fertilizer. These will grow really great in a windowsill. These actually have grown 100% in my windowsill. The only reason they're in my grow tent right now is not because they need the light, but because they're in here to do this job. I've had a little bit of a fungus gnat outbreak in here. And as you can see, they've come in here to definitely handle this job and they're doing a really good job of it. As you can see, I've had a huge crack down on my fungus gnats and they're really effective. I think if um, if the fungus gnats get any worse, I'd probably just get a couple of more of these and put them in each corner 
of my grow tent here but as of right now I'm hardly seeing any more so but they do grow really well in a in a windowsill you just want to make sure that they're getting at least probably six to eight hours of natural sun through the window a day uh, they'll probably do even better if you can get them outside in 100% sun but will thrive in a in a windowsill they will also do great in conditions where you can give them some artificial light. Uh, if you want to grow them on, in a grow tent like this under a grow light because you're working on controlling your, your fruit flies or fungus gnats, this is a great environment for them. They will also really thrive under a grow light. So that's also an option. But if you want to put them in your kitchen because you got some fruit flies, something like that, putting them in a, in a windowsill in the kitchen will be effective for them. They do not have an actual dormancy period, but they do go through in the winter months. Um, if you leave them in the natural light, they will go through what's called a succulent stage. So the leaves that they put out will be kind of small and, and uh, harder, and they won't secrete as much of the fluid to actually capture the, the insects. After uh, one, one to three months of them going through that, once the, the photo periods come down and the temperatures come down, they'll go right back to their normal growing state, which is kind of like the one you see right now. During that period, you want to make sure that you are giving them a little bit less water as they do not need nearly as much water during their succulent stage. We did talk about this earlier, but you can see that they do put out these really beautiful little pink flowers. And depending on which butterwort or uh, ping that you go with, it could have different color of leaves here. And it can also have different color and style of flowers. So you might want to do a little research. And as long as you're getting uh, the tropical butterworts or the Mexican butterworts, uh, you're in pretty good shape and they don't really need any type of winter dormancy and will continue to grow really well uh, inside of a windowsill. The more humidity you can give them, um, it is a little bit better for them. They don't need it. I live in an area that's extremely low on humidity and these continue to grow really well. So don't worry about it if you don't have a really high humidity area. It's not something that's absolutely necessary, but it will help them grow and secrete a little more of that fluid uh, if you're able to provide them with that. It's also worth noting that pings are really easy to propagate. You can actually just pull off one of these leaves here, like this, stick it in the soil, and actually keep it nice and wet. And a lot of times uh, the plant will actually take off right at the end of the leaf here. They're actually really easy to pull off. And I'm actually going to be doing a video on that here pretty soon. So if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get to see a propagation video for one of these uh, ping sethos. Now, instead of going to the store and having to buy more of these or having to order some online, you can just go ahead and propagate the ones that you have and create an entire farm of gnat and fruit fly killing machines. Let me know in the comments if you have any carnivorous plants of your own. Have you ever owned a ping or a Venus flytrap? Also, if you have any questions in regards to the care for these plants, uh, throw a comment. I do try to respond to all my comments, so I will definitely get to you. Well, thank you so much for being here. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want to check out more information on different types of carnivorous plants, including these uh, beautiful Venus flytraps right here, make sure and check that out. And um, thanks again for being here. I appreciate it. And I hope to catch you again in my next video. Bye.